Robert Black was a Scottish serial killer and paedophile who was in prison for kidnapping, raping and murdering four young girls between the ages of 5 and 11, between 1981 and 1986. This is on top of molesting dozens of other children and trying to abduct others. He's suspected of killing many more. I was only caught by chance. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Robert Black was born in Grangemouth, in the county of Stirling in Scotland, on the 21st of April 1947. He was an illegitimate child who never knew his father, and his mother, Jessie Hunter Black, abandoned him soon after his birth, leaving the country in order to get away from the stigma of being an unwed mother. Black was then placed into foster care with Jack and Margaret Tulip. However, it appears that Black was abused for years by his foster parents, and was seen by locals frequently walking around covered with bruises on his face and limbs, indicating that, behind closed doors, he was regularly beaten. Black was a chronic bedwetter, and would be beaten each time this occurred. His foster mother insists on cleanliness, but, potentially as an act of defiance, Black would refuse to wash, and so had extremely poor personal hygiene, which led to him being bullied in school, with his classmates calling him, quote, smelly Bobby Tulip. He tended to be bullied by children his own age, and Black then appeared to cope with this by victimising children younger than him to make himself feel some level of power. Black showed antisocial behaviour traits from a young age and would regularly lose his temper and vandalise school property. When he was five years old, Black and a girl the same age showed each other their genitals, and Black then became fixated with female genitalia and body orifices and would explore his own with him developing extremely deviant sexual interests and practices from a young age, which began at the age of eight, where he would insert objects into his anus. This was a habit he would continue throughout his adulthood, and decades later, police would recover pictures he had taken of himself with a wine bottle in his anus. Another showed a telephone handset that he'd inserted, and another showed a table leg which he placed in his rectum. In 1958, when Black was 11 years old, his foster mother... Margaret Tulip died, and Black was placed with another foster family, and, during this same year, is believed to have committed his first sex offence when he dragged a young girl into a public toilet and fondled her. His foster mother found out about this incident and kicked Black out of the house, leading to him being placed in a mixed-sex children's home in Falkirk. Whilst there, he would regularly expose himself to girls, forcibly remove their underwear, and on one occasion, at the age of 12, attempt to rape one of them. Due to this, he was sent to an all-boys children's home where Black claimed he was sexually abused by members of staff, including being forced to perform oral sex on them. In 1962, at age 15, Black's time at the children's home came to an end and he was helped to get a job as a meat delivery boy going door to door. Black would later state that he molested 30 to 40 girls during this time, with him knocking on the door and if a female child answered and they were alone, he would force his way into the property and sexually assault them. In the summer of 1963, at the age of 16, Black approached a six-year-old girl in a park and asked if she wanted to go and see some kittens. She agreed and followed him. Black took her to an abandoned building and attacked this girl, throttling her until she lost consciousness and then masturbating over her body. It's not clear whether Black had intended to murder this girl or just render her unconscious. However, she then came to and was found wandering the streets battered and bruised, crying and confused. Black was arrested and charged with the offence of lewd behaviour. This is clearly an alarming incident and shows that even at the age of 16 years old, Robert Black was a dangerous individual who posed a grave risk to children. However, professionals at the time clearly disagreed and a psychiatrist assessed that Black was not a danger, that this was an isolated incident and that he did not need treatment. I get that hindsight is a wonderful thing, but even just taking this incident in isolation, you have a 16-year-old seeking out a victim, then luring them to an isolated location, strangling them to the point of unconsciousness, but potentially intending to kill them, and then masturbating over their body, and they were not considered a risk. Complete lunacy, in my opinion. For this incident, Black was given a verbal warning. Within a year, Black was before the courts again, 
due to molesting the daughter of a family he was living with. This time he was charged with indecent assault, convicted and sent to Borstal. Borstal's were a type of youth detention centre in the UK which existed between the early 1900s and the 1980s. They were intended to reform young offenders but were horrific environments. I advise you to watch the 1979 film Scum starring Ray Winston to get an idea of how these places worked. But this film, whilst brutal, is a watered-down version of the reality, with these places often being staffed by sadistic predatory paedophiles, with sexual abuse and violence perpetrated by the staff and between the boys being commonplace and even encouraged. These places made the children, in most cases, far, far worse. To give you an idea of how bad things were, Black would later freely talk about his sexual abuse in children's homes, but refused to talk about his time in Borstal. It's likely that his experiences here removed any semblance of humanity from him and led him to have no stake in society. Black spent approximately three years in Borstal and was released in 1968, aged 21. He then decided to move to London and lived in a bed sit near King's Cross train station. Between 1968 and 1970, Black floated from job to job to support himself. One of these was as a lifeguard, and he used this job to indulge his sexual interest in young female children. He would peer into the changing rooms when they were getting undressed, and soon began to molest them. A complaint about him molesting one girl resulted in him losing his job, but this was not reported to the police. Sometime during this period, Black was introduced to child pornography by someone he met in a pub, and collecting and viewing this material became a fixation of Black's. This was obviously at a time before the internet, so Black would go searching back alley establishments around London to buy magazines and photographs of naked children. Black then escalated to viewing videotapes depicting the sexual abuse of children and would go to great lengths to obtain this material, including travelling around the country and even into Europe to places like Amsterdam to build up his collection. To subsidise his collection, he would also go around photographing young children at places such as swimming pools. When the police eventually arrested Black, he was found in possession of over 100 magazines containing child abuse images and 50 videos depicting the rape and molestation of little girls. Black would also pull on children's clothing, such as underwear, and masturbate. Black frequented pubs in London and became known as a good darts player, but it's clear he had no friends and was considered a loner by those who knew him. His distinctive features were his blackened teeth from years of neglect and his body odour, resulting from extremely poor personal hygiene. The pivotal event which preceded the escalation to murder occurred in 1976 when Black obtained a job as a delivery driver for a company that delivered advertising posters across the UK, Ireland and mainland Europe. Black was seen as a conscientious employee often volunteering for long-distance jobs which other people did not wish to do. What they didn't know was that this job enabled Black to obtain a detailed knowledge of the major roads in various countries, with him working out places where he could abduct children, places he could molest and eventually murder them, and escape routes. Black had bought a van for this job, and he modified it, including blacking out the windows so no one could see inside. In order to avoid being identified by eyewitnesses, Black would frequently change his appearance, including growing a beard or appearing clean-shaven, as well as sometimes shaving his head completely bald. He also owned dozens of pairs of glasses, which he would wear in order to change the shape of his face. Black is thought to have molested countless children whilst working this job, and this short clip, in his own words, has him describing trying to get children into his vehicle to abuse. You can hear his Scottish accent clearly in this audio recording. I'd be uh, driving along, I'd see a young girl. I'd go out and talk to her, try to persuade her to get into the van. And uh, take her somewhere quiet. Mm -hmm. The first murder that Robert Black is confirmed to have committed occurred in 1981. At around 1.40pm on the 12th of August 1981, nine-year-old Jennifer Cardi left her home in Ballandary 
Northern Ireland, to cycle to a friend's house. However, she never arrived. Her bike was found several hours later, a mile from her house. The kickstand was extended, suggesting that Jennifer had stopped to speak to Black, likely when he pulled up alongside her in his van. Whether willingly or unwillingly, Jennifer ended up in Black's van and was driven away. When she did not return home later that day, her frantic parents called the police, and a search including 200 volunteers combed the countryside looking for her, but found nothing. Six days later, and 16 miles south of her home address, two anglers found the body of Jennifer in a reservoir. An autopsy showed that she had been raped and strangled, and then, likely believing that she was dead, Black had thrown her body in the water. However, Jennifer was still alive, and she ultimately drowned. Jennifer's watch had stopped at 5.40pm, believed to be the moment her body entered the water, indicating that she'd been abducted, raped and murdered approximately four hours after leaving her home address. The location of her body was near a major arterial road between Belfast and Dublin, frequently used by long-distance delivery drivers, including Robert Black. Black's second confirmed victim was 11-year-old Susan Clare Maxwell, who lived in Cornhill-on-Tweed in Northumberland, a county that borders Scotland. At 4.30pm on the 30th of July 1982, she was last seen walking home from a tennis match and seen crossing a bridge over the River Tweed. Black is believed to have abducted Susan while she walked along this road, bundling her into his van and driving away. Again, her frantic parents called the police and a search involving 300 volunteers was started, but there was no sign of Susan, but reports were received of a white van, Black's van, driving around the area around the time of the abduction. Over 250 miles south from where she was abducted, on the 12th of August 1982, Susan's body was found by a lorry driver near a road outside the town of Oxeter in Staffordshire. Susan was found to have been bound, gagged and raped before being strangled to death. It's believed that she died within hours of her abduction, but that Black kept her body in his van for approximately 24 hours whilst he made his deliveries in Scotland, before travelling south to dump her body. Black's youngest known victim was five-year-old Caroline Hogg, who disappeared whilst playing outside her home in the Edinburgh suburb of Portobello, which lies on the coast, in the early evening of the 8th of July 1983. When she failed to return home by 7.15, her family began to panic and went looking for her. It became clear quickly that Caroline had gone off with a man, with her being seen in his company by several eyewitnesses. A boy said that she'd seen Caroline sat on a bench with a bald man, and another said that she was sat with this same bald man on the beach. Another witness said they'd seen a bald man with horn-rimmed glasses watching Caroline while she played. Caroline was heard to say, quote, Yes, please, to Black, before taking his hand and the pair walking towards a local fairground. Black was then seen paying for Caroline to ride a carousel whilst he watched. However, by this point, witnesses said Caroline looked frightened. The last confirmed sighting of her was at 7.30pm, but the trail then went cold. However, despite these eyewitness statements, a search which involved police, 2,000 local volunteers and members of the army could not find any trace of Caroline. The abduction of Caroline was front page news, and the police acted quickly, interviewing and eliminating nine local paedophiles from their inquiries. Ten days later, on the 18th of July 1983, Caroline's badly decomposed naked body was found dumped near the M1 motorway in Twycross in Leicestershire, approximately 300 miles south from where she'd been abducted. Due to the state of her corpse, it could not be determined how Caroline had died, or whether she had been sexually assaulted. But given her lack of clothing, this was unfortunately considered likely. Again, it appears that Black killed Caroline quickly and kept her in his vehicle whilst he made deliveries around Scotland before travelling south the next day to dump her remains. Robert Black's last confirmed victim was 10-year-old Sarah Harper, who was abducted just after 7.50pm on the 26th of March 1986 when she left her home in the Leeds suburb of Morley 
to go to the local shop to buy bread, a distance of only 100 metres. The shopkeeper confirmed that Sarah had gone into the shop and bought some items before leaving. He also saw a bald, spectacled man watching Sarah, and he briefly entered the shop, but left at the same time that she did. At 8.20pm, when Sarah had not returned home, her mother Jackie and sister Claire went looking for her, but could find no trace. They immediately called West Yorkshire Police, and a search was started immediately, with 100 officers being tasked to try and find Sarah. This included house-to-house inquiries, leaflets being distributed, and properties being searched. The police searched 3,000 properties, distributed 10,000 leaflets, and took 1,400 witness statements, but there was no trace of Sarah. Police did establish that a white van, Black's van, had been seen parked in the area on the route that Sarah would have taken to go to the shops and then back home. On the 19th of April 1986, almost a month after she was last seen alive, a man discovered Sarah's partially dressed, gagged and bound body floating in the River Trent near Nottingham, 71 miles south from the site of her abduction. An autopsy established that Sarah died between five and eight hours after she was abducted, and she had been the victim of a savage and sustained sexual assault, which caused horrific internal injuries. She was then apparently beaten to the point of unconsciousness and thrown in the river, where she drowned. The murder of Jennifer Cardi was not linked to the other murders until decades later, but the murders of Susan Maxwell, Caroline Hogg, and Sarah Harper were determined to have all been committed by the same man. A task force was set up involving six different police forces across the UK, and it was established that, due to the abduction and deposition sites, the killer must be mobile, have an extensive knowledge of the roads, and likely worked as a delivery driver, which meant that he could quickly move from place to place without arousing suspicion. The FBI were consulted, and they produced a psychological profile which indicated the killer of these children was likely a man in his 30s or 40s, Black was in his 30s when he committed these murders, would likely be a loner and be of dishevelled appearance, and he would likely live alone. The profile also indicated that the motive for the murders was sexual, and that the killer would have a fixation with child pornography. However, despite the profile and the conclusions formed by the police fitting Robert Black, he was never identified as a suspect, and instead he eventually fell into their laps when he tried to abduct another child. On the 14th of July 1990, David Herks, a 53-year-old man, was mowing his front garden in the village of Stowe in Scotland when he noticed a blue transit van pull up by the side of the road. The driver got out and looked like he was cleaning his windscreen. The six-year-old daughter of David's neighbours passed by the van and out of his view, but then he suddenly noticed her feet disappear from the pavement and the driver of the van appeared to push something into the vehicle before slamming the door and speeding away. David had the presence of mind to realise he'd just witnessed a child abduction and noted down the licence plate of the vehicle before running to the child's home address where her mother called the police. Within minutes, six police cars descended on the small village and... When speaking to David, he saw the van driving back towards them. He shouted, quote, That's him. That's the same van. An officer stood in the road and forced the driver to stop, and he was bundled out and arrested, and identified as Robert Black. One of the attending police officers was actually the abducted child's father, and he went to the back of the van and called her name. He found his daughter trussed up in a sleeping bag, with her hands bound behind her back, her legs tied together, her face bound with sticky tape and a hood over her head. I can only imagine what that officer must have felt finding his little girl like this and what he wanted to do to Black. Unfortunately, despite the quick thinking of everyone involved and the rapid apprehension of Black, he had already sexually assaulted this little girl by forcing his fingers into her vagina. En route to the police station, Black said, quote, It was a rush of blood to the head. I've always liked little girl since I was a lad. I tied her up because I wanted to keep her until I dropped a parcel off. I was going to let her go. Instead, it's like the black intended to hold her in his vehicle, complete his deliveries, 
and then find a secluded place to rape and kill this child. She was likely mere hours from death. On another note, David Herx was, rightly, held a hero for bringing Black's reign of terror to an end. He passed away in 2012, aged 75, but after a campaign was started by local residents, a street was named after him, acting as a permanent reminder to this legend. Officers quickly became convinced that Black was likely linked to the murders of Susan Maxwell, Caroline Hogg and Sarah Harper, due to the description of the man that had been seen in each of the areas where they went missing and the way that he tried to abduct his last victim. Their concerns were raised even further when Black's van was searched, with them finding restraining devices, including ropes, sticking plaster, hoods, a Polaroid camera, numerous articles of girls' clothing, a mattress and sex toys. Black claimed that on long-distance deliveries, he would pull into a lay-by and dress in the children's clothing before masturbating. When they searched his home, they found further items of children's clothing, child pornography and semen stains on articles outlining the crimes that Black had committed. However, at this stage, there was only enough evidence to charge Black with the attempted abduction and sexual assault of the child in Stowe, and on the 10th of August 1990, Robert Black went on trial for this case at Edinburgh High Court before Lord Donald MacArthur Ross. The trial lasted one day and Black was convicted of all charges. At his sentencing hearing, Lord Ross stated, quote, The abduction of this little girl was carried out with chilling, cold calculation. This was no rush of blood, as you have claimed. This is a very serious case, a horrific, appalling case. He then sentenced him, stating, quote, you will go to prison for life and your release will not be considered until such a time as it is safe to do so. I cannot find information about what minimum tariff Black was given, but with him behind bars, the police began their work to try and gather the evidence which would expose Black as a serial killer and get justice for his victims. In the early 1990s, investigators contacted Black's delivery company employer to ask whether they had travel records which could confirm his whereabouts on the days of the abductions and murders they were investigating. The police were informed that Black had always bought his petrol using a credit card and he would then submit the receipts to claim his expenses. These receipts, along with a mountain of delivery schedules, meant that Robert Black could be seen to have been in the areas where Susan Maxwell, Caroline Hogg, and Sarah Harper had all been abducted. No forensic evidence was ever found to link Black to the murders, but there was a mountain of circumstantial evidence, and this included the receipts, as well as descriptions of men matching his description, being seen where these girls were abducted, and vehicles he was driving being spotted in the locality. This evidence was deemed strong enough to take Robert Black to trial for the abduction, rape, and murder of these three children. On the 19th of May 1994, before Judge William McPherson at Moot Hall Court in Newcastle, Robert Black was found guilty after trial of the abductions, rapes and murders of Susan Maxwell, Caroline Hogg and Sarah Harper, as well as the attempted abduction of another girl. Judge McPherson described Black as being the perpetrator of, quote, offences which are unlikely ever to be forgotten and which represent a man at his most vile. He then sentenced him. Robert Black was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of 35 years to run alongside the life sentence he was already serving. However, the courts were not done with Black and by 2009, evidence had been obtained to prove that he was the murderer of Jennifer Cardi. Again, this doesn't seem to be based on forensic evidence but more details indicating his proximity to where she was abducted. On the 27th of October 2011, Black was found guilty of Jennifer's abduction, rape and murder after standing trial at Armar Crown Court in Northern Ireland before Judge Weatherup. On the 8th of December 2011, at his sentencing hearing, Judge Weatherup stated, quote, Your crime was particularly serious. You subjected a vulnerable child to unpardonable terror and took away her life. He then sentenced him. 
Robert Black was again sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum tariff of 25 years. Robert Black is still considered a suspect in 14 further murders of children in the UK, Ireland, France, Germany and the Netherlands. However, police believe that it's more likely that Black killed a further four children. This includes the following two cases. Mary Boyle was aged six years old when she disappeared on the 18th of March 1977 whilst visiting her grandparents in Ballyshannon, a town in County Donegal, Ireland. Black is known to have been in the area, having been reprimanded for after hours drinking in a pub on the day that Mary went missing. A woman claimed that she heard whimpering noises coming from Black's van. Mary's body has never been found. The other case is that of 13-year-old Jeanette Tate, who went missing whilst delivering newspapers at around 3.30pm on Saturday the 19th of August 1978 in Aylesbeard, Devon. At approximately 3.28pm, two school friends saw Jeanette walking past while pushing her bike and they stopped to read a newspaper, meaning that she briefly went out of their sight. They then continued and approximately eight minutes later found Jeanette's bike in the middle of the path and she had disappeared. Her body has never been found. The police submitted evidence to the Crown Prosecution Service on several occasions to have Black charged with Jeanette's murder as it appears that eyewitnesses had spotted him in the area on the day of her abduction but the evidence was considered insufficient. In late 2015, police were obtaining new evidence and were about to make another case to the Crown Prosecution Service to charge Black. However, this would never happen, as on the 12th of January 2016, at age 68, Robert Black was found dead in his cell at H&P McGabry in Northern Ireland, having suffered a heart attack. Black never admitted his guilt for any of the murders and refused to talk about them so he took his secrets to the grave with him. Robert Black was a man who was committed to indulging his deviant sexual interests. He was a prolific and dedicated predatory paedophile whose crimes plumbed the depths of depravity. Psychologists who have analysed the crimes of Robert Black have concluded that his drive to kill was linked to his childhood experiences in particular his own experiences of victimisation, I would tend to agree with this. I think that Black's early experiences of being abandoned and physically abused would have led him to develop antisocial attitudes and beliefs, with him seeing himself as unconnected with society. Such an individual has no stake in the world they live in, no desire to follow the rules, and has a lack of regard for anyone else aside from what they can get from them. I think that the sexual abuse Black experienced, including likely in Borstal, would have distorted any perception of acceptable sexual behaviour and reinforced his hatred of society, but also how sex, especially acts of sexual violence, can be used not only to gain sexual gratification, but also give someone a sense of power. Maybe this is why Black was drawn to children. There's an obvious power disparity between adults and children, not just because of the size difference, but also the naivety that comes with having no experience of the world. Black was not an intelligent man, but it's clear he had the cunning to be able to manipulate children into going with him, playing on this naivety and the natural trust children have in adults. Black existed in his own little world, which appears to have revolved entirely around sexual acts with children. I think that Black saw the roads of the countries he traversed as his hunting grounds, and I imagine he was filled with sexual excitement as he hunted for victims and a feeling of ultimate power and control when he tricked them into his van, knowing that there was no escape for them. To Robert Black, these children were not individuals in their own right to cherish and protect with families and futures. Instead, they were merely objects for him to use to get gratification. Once this had been achieved, he simply disposed of them. I can't imagine the terror these children felt in their last moments and how they expressed this likely crying out for help and for their mothers. Given Black never spoke about his crimes, it's unclear whether he found the act of killing arousing or whether it was just a way to cover his tracks. I'm inclined to think that it was a combination of the two, with Black likely finding killing these children arousing as taking their lives represented the ultimate expression of his power over them. I have no doubt that Robert Black killed more than four children, 
and believe there are likely murders committed by him in various countries which the police have never connected to him. Robert Black was, in my opinion, the embodiment of evil, and, if there is a hell, hopefully is in the deepest, hottest part, being tormented until the end of forever. So, why do you think Robert Black committed these offences? Had you heard of this case before? Please like, share and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.